There are quite a few videos on YouTube around tarp setup. This is not going to be one of those videos. If you were a Boy Scout back in the 70s and 80s, let's let's be real. Um, your so-called tents were canvas tarps that were set up in an A-frame. So this is my first TP setup, and I suspect I didn't really do it properly. So I'm going to have to go back and look at the instructions. Hi, I'm Jim and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at tarp setups. About a week ago I purchased an REI uh, quarter dome SL tarp and I'm here in my front yard. I'm just going to play around a bit with different setups. I scoured the internet over the week um, trying to get a handle on the different ways of setting up a tarp. Um, I'll have some links in the description. There are quite a few videos on YouTube around tarp setup. This is not going to be one of those videos. Um, what this is going to be is it's going to be me looking at the different setups that I found and trying to determine which is going to be the best for me. Uh, and what I'm really looking for, I'm looking for one, uh, a setup that I can pitch quickly um, when it's raining, um, where I'm not gonna have to rely on a ridge line uh, typically, you know, up in the high Sierra, you're in and among a lot of granite. Uh, there may not be a lot of trees. So I've got to become comfortable with uh, tarp setups that I can pitch just using um, a pair of trekking poles. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at that. Uh, something um, that is going to be good for wind, um, maybe both. Um, something that's fully enclosed, something that's not as fully enclosed. Um, something that I can use for early season where you know when it's gonna be a little bit colder and then you know something that I can use um, in the in the heat of summer so I'm really looking for you know maybe three to five configurations that I can become proficient with um, that I'll be able to use in the backcountry so here's a setup that I'll be working with I've got two REI flash carbon trekking poles now I own several sets of trekking poles. This is the, the ones that I think are most extreme. They're set up for snow. And then we've got the, uh, the tarp system itself. Uh, the tarp, which is just under 10 feet. Uh, it came with eight stakes, eight guy lines. Um, and what I'm gonna have to do is just try to figure out, okay, well, how many stakes do I really need to carry? How many guy lines do I really need to carry? For those folks that did not see the first video, uh, the Quarter Dome SL is a, is a square tarp. It's got five tie downs on each side. Um, as you can see, it's got a few attachments uh, along, the, uh, along the center ridge line. Let's see what we can do with just the tarp, the stakes, and my trekking poles. Now, the great thing about uh, this setup is you know they do the work for you so you're not going to have to you're not going to have to learn any knots or fancy hitches or anything like that um, so on the uh, on the guy lines one end um, has this arrow shaped attachment which I presume is for um, looping around and, and catching itself and then the other end it's got the the adjusting attachment which is used for for attaching to a stake and adjusting the length of the guy line so I've finished my first configuration, which is a standard lean-to configuration. I've already met my first challenge, and that is the wind. Originally, I had set this up to be facing in the other direction. Wind shifted on me, and um, so I had to turn it around and uh, set it up the way that it's set up now. I think this is, you know, it's a quick configuration that I would use if I was stuck in a hailstorm like Roger and I were uh, several weeks ago. It would be good for, for two people, but it's not something that I think I would use long term. So here I am inside the lean-to. It is roomy. Um, I am a little concerned about pulling the, the tarp taut, I, and there have been several mentions of this in other videos around, um, you know, keeping the tie-downs from tearing away from the tarp. They're not, they're not grommets, right? They're not built into the tarp. They're actually, uh, you know, double stitched and hanging on the outside. So I'm a little bit concerned about that and about the wind maybe pulling those apart. Um, so I'm going to have to do some reading on how to, how to mitigate that. Sorry for all the background noise, my neighborhood seems to be very busy today. But you can see the wind just keeps pushing the tarp down into me now. You know, two ways of mitigating that. I can get a stick and, uh, you know, put a small around the top of it or, or, or a sock, push it up from the middle 
um, that'll keep it up. Or I can attach a line here and, and pull this up. So that tells me immediately, okay, well, I'm going to want to carry at least, at least three lines. So let's see what else I can do with this. You know, with this configuration, there are a couple easy, um, easy changes that I can do. And it's it, one thing that I found about um, looking at all these different tent, uh, tarp setups is that it really, and you can see now the wind has changed and now we're blowing into the wind. Um, the one thing I found is that it really is your imagination. I mean, the, the different setups that you use is just purely based on your imagination. I found one guy that had a video of 21 different setups and some were setups that I'd seen before and then others were setups that seemed pretty obvious to me that he's just sort of screwing around trying to figure out what works and came up with a bunch of stuff. Now another good thing about having pre-made kit is I've got these pulls on the stakes. I can just pull them up nice and easy and reposition them as needed. Okay, I've had to reposition, as I said, because of the wind. And in this second configuration, I'm using two additional guidelines. So simply insert the arrowhead into the loop. And see if I can do this with one hand. Loop that through. And now, now it's caught and I can stake that down. What I found with this next configuration, which is simply the same lean to, same basic lean to configuration with my poles brought in one station over, um, and then the flaps folding down, I can see that I can position these flaps at any angle I want for, for wind or for rain. Um, I can bring them down to the same peg if I need to. So um, I'm still only using 410 stakes, um, but this time I've increased the number of uh, guy lines I'm using to, uh, to four. This would be good for a uh, summer hailstorm if it wasn't too windy. Enough room for two people. It does catch a lot of air though. I've brought my trekking poles down to, uh, I guess it's about the, the 100 centimeter mark. Um, and I've pegged in the tarp at the halfway point. And what's obvious here is I've got more ground cloth than I do overhang. So that's gonna be a problem in, uh, in rain, but in you know nice sunny conditions where it's not raining. Um, if I brought this as a shelter to sleep in, this wouldn't, This wouldn't be too bad, um, especially if I don't want to deal with the uh, with the dirt and, and whatever else. I've got plenty of room, plenty of room for gear. Um, one concern, at least the way that I've got it set it up, is that I've got my trekking pole on top of the um, ground cloth, and so every time I move, the trekking pole is going to move. I've pulled the ground cloth back to the one quarter mark, and I've raised the trekking poles back to the 140 uh, centimeter mark. And this is this is better, um, but again, the ground cloth is sticking outside of the uh, the roof of the of the tarp or the overhang. Uh, but there's plenty of room in here. And if this is where I was going to sleep, this would be a good space. Again, it's looking like I'm going to have to do something with with the middle to prevent sag. But I know that for uh, this type of setup, this isn't optimal and I've seen better configurations. So I'm gonna give those a try. Okay, before I completely um, change things out, I thought I would try the lean-to configuration uh, with the two ground cloth um, configurations. Here's a popular configuration called the Seafly. Uh, I'm getting some sag in the middle, so I'm gonna have to work on my setup. But, um, you know, like all these open side setups, I don't think it's what I'm gonna be looking for in terms of quick, quick setup in the rain. Um, it's got plenty of room and it would be a good setup when I know it's not gonna rain. I mean, and even in, even in the rain, I mean, I guess it's, you know, if it rains, I, the rain's not gonna hit me. Um, 
my concern is what I'm using here is the ground cloth. I guess I could always fold that under so that it's not catching any, any rain from the sides. Or what I could do to limit, I guess, my, my weather exposure is to lower the profile. I've done some readjustment uh, to try to get it tighter across the center. Um, I think the one, the one drawback that I'm seeing about this setup, it, it is roomy. Um, it does give you quite a bit of quite a bit of coverage for you know for yourself and your gear. Um, the um, the ground cloth is only big enough for your for your sleeping pad, but uh, but none of that really matters. I, I think that the biggest drawback that I'm seeing with this setup is of all the setups that I've tried so far, this one actually requires the most space, and by that I mean to get everything nice and tight, I have to pull the guidelines out to get it taut. Um, which means basically that I need more space. And in the Sierra backcountry, you don't always have a lot of space. I mean, a lot of times, um, you know, I'm setting up on granite where there's very little space, very little dirt. So that's something I've got to keep in mind um, when I'm doing these setups. Here's another configuration of the Seafly. Um, and this one is a lower, lower profile. Um, this actually is quite nice. I, you know, I'm not real thrilled about these open-sided um, configurations, but I do like the ones. And you know, I got a, I got a clear, close to a 10 by 10 foot tarp, so uh, it's going to be big and it's going to be versatile, and I can't complain about the size. Um, but I do like uh, these lower profile ones. And this, yeah, I think this would be. This would be suitable. Um, it does look like, you know, it could do with another guy line there in the front. Um, it does require eight stakes because, you know, I'm only using three quarters of the fly now. And so I've had to stake down the inside to double up on the, on the ground cloth. And then I've had to stake my tent pole in the back and then stake the fly in the front. Um, it looks like I could probably I could probably do with having one here and then maybe even having one in the back. So, um, you know, this configuration may need a little bit more equipment than um, than I actually want to carry with me. We'll see. Uh, but I do like the compact the compact nature of it. I do like this setup, but as I as I reassess things, um, its biggest drawback is that I'm going to need space. I need to stake it out in this corner. I need to stake it out behind in that corner um, and do the same on either side. Also, it requires all eight stakes uh, where some of the other setups require fewer. I do like the compact nature. I do like that uh, it puts you closer to nature, um, but there's no, there's really no no space for your gear. I mean, I guess I could put my gear down at my feet or maybe at the head. I, you know, it's, it's, it's nearly 10 feet long. I'm only five foot six, five foot seven. So, um, yeah, I, I could do that that way. So this is a setup that uh, TA Outdoors calls the Stealth Shelter. And it's similar to one that I liked previously where I had the, the trekking poles up higher. It does something significantly different. Um, when I was setting, doing my setups previously, I wasn't really too concerned with where the center line was. Um, as I said, there are tie down points on the center line of the tarp, but I actually was building the tarp so that I was um, parallel to those tie in points and not perpendicular. It didn't matter because I wasn't using them. For this particular setup, you do have to use them. Um, basically, you take those, um, those mid distance tie in points along the center line. Um, and you stake those in at the back and you make that the back of your of your tarp and then uh, You either use a ridge line or in this case I'm using my poles to stake out the, the center half of the tarp and then you pull uh, The tarp out from the side so in this in this case, it's the halfway point um, You put everything else underneath you stake down that uh, that front quarter 
and and there you have it and you know i i really like this setup uh, it does require all of the stakes so it does require all eight all eight stakes let's see how it looks from the inside uh, well <sighs> it's not so bad um it is yeah it doesn't have as much room as my as my tent. I mean, it's got more it's got more storage space over here. I could put put all my I could put my pack and all my gear here. I could sleep here. I've got plenty plenty of space there. Plenty of space down there. Um, it's low prof it's low profile, so I'm sure it's probably good in wind. It's got me covered on three sides from rain. Uh, so I'm liking this. I could probably afford to raise this up a little bit. I've got the trekking poles at 120 centimeters. Um, if I could raise it up beyond the length of this quarter, I, I think that would be good. I think I'd like maybe a little more headroom, but there's a lot, there's a lot of space in here. There's a lot to like about this setup. You could sleep two people in here if you didn't have any gear and you didn't mind this. As you can see, I can get way back in here, so. This is one I think I'm gonna to have to practice and play around with a little bit. Okay, my next configuration is the standard A-frame. And, uh, you know, if you, were, if you were a Boy Scout back in the 70s and 80s, let's, let's be real, um, your so-called tents were canvas tarps that were set up in an A-frame. Um, so there's nothing Nothing new and exciting about this. It's tried and true um, design. I can sit up in it, so you know if I if, if I'm out with somebody else, this is going to be a good setup for us to spend the night. Uh, minimal wind, um, decent rain. Yeah, this 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 works fine. This is sort of a no-brainer. The setup, of course, is 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 real easy. I've just got my my poles on either side, um, a line down to keep that taut, four stakes in, in either corner. If it gets cold at night, I can lower one of the uh, trekking poles, restake everything out, and minimize the amount of wind coming through. Even with the lower pitch, uh, I've still got plenty of room in here for two people. Now there's a variant that I've seen that allows you to basically create doors. So let's see, let's see how that works. Okay, well, I guess all you would need to do is go one peg section over, um, and then it allows you to pull the uh, pull the flaps down. And I could tie, I could get something in here, get something on this side, some cordage, lash the two together. And that would give me somewhat of a door. And if I did some adjustments to the height, I could probably bring this in a lot closer. Here's another version of the A-frame. Uh, now I'm on a, I didn't mention this before, but I'm on a slight slant, I'm on a slight hill, and that's causing a little uh, asymmetry in the setup. Um, but what you can see now, what I've done is I've completely eliminated the back trekking pole. Uh, I'm using the back trekking pole as a stake. I've got a line to the, um, the center tie down in the center line. I've looped it around and then I've staked it off down there. Um, and I guess this would be probably be a good setup uh, for two people in the winter. I've got to imagine. Um, you know, it looks it looks fairly cozy, fairly warm. You know, you're sure to get some condensation, but with that front open, you know, maybe it won't be so bad. Here's another A-frame configuration. Um, it's kind of a wedge. And uh, yeah, you know, it has the advantage of having the ground cloth, but I think I much prefer uh, the setups where I can, um, I can get in horizontally as opposed to having to to crawl in head first. I think that's all the uh, the alternate A-frame configurations that I want to try. 
Um, let's move on to the plow point. So this is my version of the plow point. Um, this is interesting. Uh, it's very roomy. It's got a lot of coverage to it. You know, typically the front is tied up to a tree and then the, uh, the middle tie down on the center line is also tied to a tree and that's all this is brought up um, a little higher and if I had larger stakes if I had if I made some wooden stakes I could adjust uh, the tie downs up and down to allow um, more air circulation but this is fairly quick and easy um, what I've done because I really want to get used to doing this without having any trees or anything nearby. Um, I've used my trekking poles and so down here in the center I've, uh, I've positioned a, a trekking pole in the middle and there's a tie down here which I should probably take advantage of. Um, but yeah, this is, this is pretty roomy. I can easily fit two people in here, all my gear. In fact, I could easily fit three people in here. This is huge. This is really big. Um, I think I would prefer using this to an A-frame, just because it's got it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of coverage, and um, yeah, this is sweet. I really like this. No wonder, no wonder it's sort of a classic bushcrafting uh, type of uh, type of setup. Here's a plot point variant where I put the um, uh, the trekking poles at the halfway point, and then I pull the front flap down. This isn't bad. This would make a good shelter for two people. Uh, I think if I was alone, I, I think I think I still like that 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 uh, stealth shelter. Um, I'm still liking that one. And I'd have to put I'd have to find a stick and maybe get a small or a t-shirt or something and stick it up stick it up here in the middle for a little more headroom. Um, but this isn't terrible. Yeah. So here's that same configuration with that uh, that fly pulled back and what I did is I pulled it back I brought it through the center tie in the back and I, uh, I cinched it to the uh, the stake that I have in the back and my wife just came back from the Filipino market so I've got empanada calamansi juice so I'm gonna sit out here and, <laughs> and eat for a little bit I've been out here now for uh, for three hours um, you know this is sort of it's sort of tedious work but you know if, if if you get gear you need to practice with it you need to learn it you, you need to understand it so um, you know even though it's a little tedious to come out here for three four I'll probably be out here for five hours I would expect trying different um, tarp configurations um, by trying them out and especially by recording them I'll be able to, uh, you know, to, to recall my, my impressions of each. Um, now, if I was really diligent, I would be taking notes. Um, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I've got the video, so that, that's my notes. But, you know, I can, I can see the, the pluses and the minuses of, of each. So, I was uh, setting up to do another uh, plow point variant where I pull the backside in and use that as a ground cloth. And I just sort of came up with this little configuration. I'm sure I didn't invent this, uh, but it is kind of nifty. I've got the highest trekking pole set up as uh, the front of the plow point. I've got another one slightly lower on the end. Um, I've tried to tie off and pull back that center pole on, along the center line. And let's get in and see how that is. That's actually not bad. I've gone and gotten my other trekking pole, and so this is going to simulate a stick that I might find on the trail and, and park down. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm liking that a lot. I'm liking that a whole lot. I'm keeping the same basic configuration. I, I like having that. I like having that second pole there. Um, you know, these right now I've got. I'm using. I'm utilizing all eight stakes and two of the guy lines if i bring another guy line or two you know i could probably pull this down if i needed to but anyway so what i've done here is i've just i've just brought the back in to use it as a uh, as a ground cloth i've using the center 
the center pull there on the center line. Um, I've pulled that back. And that's not terrible. I've pulled things all the way forward. And, meh. I don't know. It's basically a clamshell now. And, uh, you know, I guess it works. I've got a ground cloth. I've got a high, high ceiling. Um, I'm a short guy, so... So this would work. Maybe for uh, hot summer days when there's been a thunderstorm and the ground is wet, maybe. I don't know. So this is my first TP setup, and I suspect I didn't really do it properly, so I'm going to have to go back and look at the instructions. So starting with the A-frame, I brought it down, st staked out the sides, brought the back of the tarp in as the ground cloth, staked it off back there, used the center tie um, on the center line, staked that, that off. And it's not, it's not terrible, although it's not as taut as I would, I would expect it's supposed to be. I do like this though. Um, it is a bit like a, like a tent. I mean, and you know, all these setups, all of these setups are, or most of them, I think maybe the, uh, the stealth shelter may not be as big as my tent now, or maybe just as big, but all of these are bigger than what I have as a tent now. And again, I'm not planning on, I might be. I, I've been thinking about tarps because I've been, I've been wanting to bivy more, um, and I've been wanting to have um, something to protect me against the rain when I bivy. Um, so that said, all the all of these will do that. Um, I'm not looking to replace my tent in any way, shape, or form. I mean, this thing, uh, you know, weighs maybe a pound less than my tent. So, um, you know, when I'm going out early season and there are mosquitoes, definitely bringing my tent. I'm not I'm not going to be bringing something like this and then bringing along uh, uh, a bug bivy or, or something like that. I, I don't see the point in doing that. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Most of the TP configurations are going to be with one trekking pole on the inside and uh, probably without ground cloths as well. I took a quick look at the proper setup. Here it is, but I think I like my way better. Of all the setups I've tried so far, um, this is the one that is best suited for using a ridge line. Um, having that pole dead center um, and then pulling the sides out doesn't look like it leaves me much room in there we'll, we'll see I'll get in um, but it was very fidgety to set up I mean it was you have to make sure so I'm using I'm using that center that center line um, staking out both sides pulling the um, uh, the tent forward so basically using each half of the tent as I went around and now that I'm explaining this, I can see how I could have set it up a lot easier. But I was fidgeting with this for a while. Once I'm inside, um, it is it is a little cramped. I mean, it's 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 tall, but uh, maybe at a diagonal with my head sticking out. Yeah, no, this is not. It's not a setup that I'm going to choose, nor would I recommend it. If you had a bigger tarp, maybe, um, but with my tarp, um, which is just under 10 feet, um, definitely, definitely not. This is a, a, a TP tarp configuration that certainly has a lot of wow factor to it. Um, it seems to be pretty popular. What I've done here is you start by basically spreading the entire tarp out so it's perfectly flat. So you've got every, every corner um, taut. And then you stake out these first two uh, tie points from the, from the edge on both sides. And then you come, you take the end tie, 
and you bring it in uh, basically a third of the width of the tarp and you stake it down and you do the same on both sides. You put your guide line in front, you take your pole, stick it up the middle. Now this is a setup where it's a, it's a good thing to make sure that you've got your center line going uh, front to back so that you can use that first tie-in point on the center line as a guide. Then basically you just take the two remaining front tie-out points and, and you fold them back and the good thing about this is that if it gets if it gets too cold you can just bring those in and you could bring both of those in and tie them off so i'd imagine this would be a good winter setup let's go inside and take a look Well, I've certainly got a, a lot of headroom in here. Um, there is room for gear. Let's see. Let's see if I can lay down in it. Now I am finding the center pole kind of a, a hindrance, but I guess you'd probably get used to that. Now I've got more than enough space in here, and I think since I am, you know, not not used to having this pole here, I think what I would probably do is I would stack my gear on one side to leave an opening on the other. This opening is, um, you know, just as wide as what I'm used to. There's plenty of room for one or two people to, uh, to lay down in here if they're friendly. Here's another tricked out uh, TP tarp setup, and this one really is, really is like a tent. So essentially what you do is you stake down the rear of your, uh, of your tarp, and then you bring the two corner end pieces together in the center and that basically creates a door for you so this this is basically the door and you can see there's an opening and you just step inside So once in, it's got plenty of, of head height. Uh, it is hot in here. I can already, uh, I can already feel it getting warm. So this is definitely a, definitely a winter setup or, you know, cold Sierra storm type of a setup. You know, it is going to build up quite a bit of condensation. So, you know, this may be an instance where I might want to have uh, longer stakes. So I can stake this up a little bit higher, get some airflow going in here because this is this is this is getting hot but i've got let's see how much room i've got i've got a good bit of room in here uh, i think again this would be probably a situation where i would well you know what i could i could basically i could sleep on either side of uh, of this let's see how that let's see how that works yeah it doesn't matter i'm short enough that i've got I've got more than enough room, so I could stash my gear in 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 this corner. Um, I could sleep here. That leaves me plenty of in, any plenty of uh, access to the entrance. But man, it is it is hot. Now, when it when it comes to these setups, I am I'm quickly becoming a believer of you know simple and fast is best and this of all the tp setups this one was the easiest and the fastest to do you basically you stake down the two back ends as i said you bring the third and fourth corners together in the center and boom bob's your uncle this is an interesting setup for a fully enclosed tarp um, i haven't seen any instructions on how to do this online so I'll do my best to explain how I did it. Um, first thing I first thing I did was I took the front of the tarp and I pinned down two sections. So I took completely flat portion, pinned down one corner, um, and then I pinned down the second corner. Then I went over um, to the right side, went to the halfway point, and I pinned that down. Then I folded the tarp back on itself 
and uh, pin that down over my trekking pole using a guideline. So that basically creates a diagonal, um, which then will allow for a fully enclosed flap. Now in the corner, this gives you some headroom, which isn't so bad. Um, I guess you could stash gear back here if you needed to. Okay, got plenty of room to, um, to sleep. Gives me some warmth and a good bit of privacy if I need it. I could also tie these off like that one there if I wanted a fully enclosed, uh, fully enclosed tarp. That's not bad. So that, as they say, is job done. I've spent over six hours um, putting up and taking down these various tarp configurations. It, it is a bit tedious, but um, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna buy gear to use in the backcountry, then you need to be familiar with it and uh, have a good feel for what's going to work for you. Um, and so that's what this was all about. Um, again, it was it was really, really tedious, but um, I learned a lot and I got more efficient at it as, as I did it. And, and that's the important thing, right? You don't want to wait until you're in the backcountry and you need to do something. Um, to, to figure out and learn how to do it. So I haven't yet come to a conclusion on which configurations I'm gonna use. I did like the uh, the stealth setup quite a bit. I like the plow point quite a bit. You know, I'll go back through the video, try to figure out what's gonna work for me. If you had the fortitude to, uh, to watch this entire video, um, thank you for that. And I hope you enjoyed it.